Hello again folks, Doc here with part two of my introduction to DIY backpacking food. In this segment, I will be using all of the essential equipment that I use. So to begin with, I have my Cuisinart stand mixer. This doesn't see a whole lot of use, but it's handy for mixing things together, like thick sauces, things like that. Um, it has a meat grinder attachment that I use for grinding my own meat so I can control the fat content to help cope with the risk of rancidity while dehydrating food. My engine of a million smoothies, my uh, Ninja blender. I have mixed feelings about its performance overall, but a blender is an essential tool and I recommend you have one. On that note, I have a tiny little chippy chopper food processor. Um, also very important, great for processing things, breaking them down into smaller bits. Just very useful in general. Now, somewhat more controversially, is my immersion circulator. Now, it's a new and trendy thing, so it's probably going to get a lot of hate, but when I make something that requires, say, braising meat or veggies, I usually end up popping it in my immersion circulator more than a steamer or the oven because it's more efficient to basically stew something in a bag in a vat of water versus firing up the entire oven to, what, braise a chicken breast so it falls apart so I can dehydrate it better. Save yourself some energy costs by just going sous vide here. Um, moving on down here is my nice granite mortar and pestle. I love this thing. Honestly, I use it to pulverize anything aromatic, garlic, ginger, herbs, spices, whatever you need. It breaks them down in a way that none of these implements can really do and just opens up those cell walls and releases all those flavorful compounds in ways that you'd have to try it to really see it, but this is a game changer for me. I recommend you have one too. And then of course, a kitchen scale. I use it to portion out all of my food. I use it to pre-weigh everything to make sure I'm packing efficiently. I use it just to weigh shit. I mean, that's what a scale is for. You weigh shit. Moving on down is my infrared thermometer. Yeah, like Predator. Um, I use this in a lot of searing applications to make sure my grill, pan, what have you, is up to temp to make sure I'm getting that glorious char mark. This is just an essential for cooking for me. It just happens that cooking for backpacking is cooking, so it's an essential. Moving on down, my trusty instant read thermometer. Again, very useful because much of cooking is just getting something to a designated temperature where it's ready by the standards you expect it, whether it's the temperature where the collagen is converted to connective tissue or whether it's just pasteurized. You need to know what's going on. You need a thermometer. This is an essential for everyday cooking. No kitchen should be without it. And then over here is one of my very favorite little trinkets. This is my vacuum sealer. I use it to vacuum seal everything. What's really cool about it is it has a little stash pocket here for putting more bags in. Very nice. Not necessary at all. What is necessary, however, is making sure you have separate controls for sealing and for vacuuming. Don't get one that has to vacuum to seal. If you just want to make a seal, you're going to want one that just does sealing. Likewise, if it's struggling to vacuum, you might want to be able to seal it on your own. Have that control. It's worth it. Finally, one of my most important assets for making backpacking food is my dehydrator. You can click the link below to see my really awful review of it, but the point is, I love that dehydrator. It's worth having one for making your own food because how else are you gonna dry it? Put the oven on low and spread it across a sheet pan and burn up five tons of gas while you're waiting for it to dehydrate? No, just get a dehydrator, they're cheap. I regret that it's not on this counter here, but I just simply ran out of space. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm glad I could share with you all of my essential cooking equipment for making my own backpacking food. I hope this has informed you and motivated you to pursue the hobby yourself. Stay tuned as more episodes will come out concerning recipes, techniques, and the science behind DIY backpacking food. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Please remember to like, comment, or leave a nasty message below, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.